Welcome to Robinson Foundry. My name's Seth Robinson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Lost PLA method to turn a 3D print into a colorful bronze bust. This model is called Skullhawk, and it was made by an artist named Zane Rogers. I started this project by printing the model on my 3D printer using a plastic called PLA. PLA is a great plastic for this casting process because it has a relatively low melting point and can be cleanly burned away. I've found that Overture Black PLA burns out without leaving any ash behind. I also printed a large sprue, which will help supply the casting with metal as it solidifies and shrinks. After the model and sprue were done printing, I shaved off the excess plastic with a knife. Then I glued the sprue and model together using hot glue. I attached a small piece of filament running from the tips of the teeth to the cheeks. This will help ensure that the teeth fill with metal properly. I also attached a wooden dowel which will act as a handle. The next step was to dip the model into a ceramic material called suspend slurry. After letting the first coat dry, I dipped the model into the slurry again, but this time, I coated it with silica sand. The goal was to build up a thick ceramic shell, which could withstand the heat of the molten bronze. I coated the model a total of eight times, followed up by one final coat without sand. Once the shell was completely dry, I used a blowtorch to remove the wooden handle. After attaching a piece of wire to use as a handle, I placed the shell into my kiln and started slowly bringing up the temperature. Unfortunately, I noticed some cracks starting to form as the shell heated up, so I repaired the cracks by painting on some more ceramic material. Then I wrapped the entire shell with thin wire and coated it three more times with ceramic shell to prevent it from cracking further. I placed the shell back into the kiln and slowly brought the temperature up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the PLA melts out of the shell without catching fire and can be removed from the kiln. Once the PLA was removed, I fired the shell for a few hours at about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit or 800 degrees Celsius. This vitrified the shell, turning it into a ceramic. I let the shell cool down for a while and then checked to make sure that no cracks had formed. Then I placed the shell back into the kiln and heated it up to about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees Celsius. As the shell was heating up, I started to melt some bronze. For this casting, I melted down some scrap bronze that I had left over from previous projects. I estimated that I needed about 9 pounds or 4 kilograms of metal to comfortably fill the mold. Thank you. 
This amount of bronze took about 30 minutes to melt in my homemade furnace. While the bronze was melting, I heated up some sand to place around the shell. This was done to keep the shell as hot as possible during the pour. I used an old crucible to hold the shell and sand as it was being filled. I removed the shell from the kiln while it was at a temperature of about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit and poured the nearly 600 degree Fahrenheit sand around it. This was a bit challenging as, at those temperatures, my gloves didn't keep my hands insulated for long. I let the bronze heat up to about 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1150 degrees Celsius, and then carefully poured the metal into the mold. I positioned the mold at an angle so that the metal would flow down along the side of the mold instead of dropping straight down to the bottom, which could create lots of turbulence that could lead to imperfections in the casting. About an hour later, I removed the shell from the sand and let it cool down for a while before breaking it open. I love cracking open these shells. It's always exciting and you never know exactly what the casting is going to look like. Fortunately, this casting turned out really nice looking. I used a pressure washer to remove the large pieces of shell and then finished it up with a sandblaster. Next, I cut off the sprue and little pieces that I attached to the teeth. Then I went to work cleaning up the casting with a file. After using a wire brush to polish the bronze, I had to decide how I was going to finish the bust. I decided to create a dark patina on the entire piece and then polish the high spots to bring out the detail. To darken the bronze, I used a blowtorch which very quickly causes the metal to go through a series of color changes. It was at this point that I decided to take advantage of the interesting colors that I was seeing and go for a more colorful finish. And this is what I came up with. I really like how colorful this patina turned out and the casting itself looks great. It fits right in with my other castings made using Zane Rogers artwork. If you would like to print these models yourself, I included a link in the description. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Tell me what you think in the comments, and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching.